Hi right, boys, um, just a quick screencast, just to go over a couple of the bits um, for your off-season training. Uh, all on Google Sheets, same login details, if you haven't got them, I'll bang them back into the group when I post this. Um, just want to give you a brief overview of what I'm thinking. Uh, obviously we had our uh, discussions um, towards two weeks ago now. Uh, it's probably the right time now just to start thinking about doing some training and start getting back into it. Two weeks recovery is more than enough and plenty enough and you want to start easing your way back in. Um, I know some of the boys have been training over at Padgate over the last couple of weeks, which is fine. I uh, just want to give you a little bit more structure towards the training now, just to make sure that you're prepared or optimally prepared for when we come back in January. So j just the biggest, big key ones really is just to maintain your aerobic base. Uh, maintain muscle size and degree of maximal strength. Uh, there is some strength sessions in here. Uh, there won't be uh, max max effort strength training where you might be doing heavy ones, twos and threes, probably working up to a five. But again, you just want to try and maintain a maximal strength base rather than just letting that completely subside. Um, during this period, I think it's really important as well that you still put it in the context that although you're just trying to to maintain a little bit of fitness, you're not trying to overtrain and do too much to come into pre-season too prepared. There's a couple of reasons for that. Obviously, if you think back to a standard pre-season that we'd have, we'd usually have five, six weeks pre-Christmas, then a two-week two, two week break, and then following in three weeks of training with a, with a taper into game one. Uh, we're not going to have that, so we're going to have probably eight weeks solid of training, which we will get a break in between, and we will have a taper in between, but still we won't have the the big two week break that we usually get at Christmas time. So there'll be more of a gradual taper of training loads and probably a couple of days off um, when we decide exactly what the schedule looks like there. But really what you don't want to do is go into the pre-season period, done a load of training and quality training, doing it for the right reasons over the past six, seven weeks since we finished, then going into pre-season and having to do another eight weeks, then going into the season and having, still having to play Nine, nine months of the season so you just want to make sure you've done enough training that's going to help us sustain through the pre-season period and come through um, uninjured um, uh, decrease of any stress and uh, uh, unnecessary stress I've completely knackered that was spelling up and uh, there is no um, um, spell check on Google Sheets but uh, you get the idea um, on uh, unnecessary stress on shoulders, knees and hips. And again, that's probably what you're looking to you boys who are in, the, in your late 20s, early 30s now. But obviously, we're going to do a lot of lifting in the pre-season pre period. The, the volume of that will be a lot higher. And then obviously, into the season, obviously, you've got a lot of collisions to deal with as well. So try to decrease and minimise that as possible during this period to let your body rest and recover from the season that we've just had. And then um, going back to when we were doing our return to um, return to play training coming from COVID, is trying to maintain a degree of high speed running tolerance. Um, that's going to be really important as that's going to be a focus moving into our pre-season. We're going to do a lot more of the high speed tempo running that we did. Uh, since we came back from COVID and obviously we're going to be doing a lot of the high speed screwing stuff towards the back end as well so having a little bit of a base of that to come into those first two or three weeks with and um, that decreases my um, fears if you will if you're picking up a hamstring injury picking up a calf or quad injury as well so how you probably want to be setting your week up uh, I'll get to the strength sessions and running sessions uh, in a sec but similar to coming back from COVID what I would be suggesting is that you have a double loading week or a triple loading week. Now you wanna, you can flip this either way. Now, if you're somebody who's, yeah, I'm thinking towards probably the 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 younger end of the squad, he's trying to maintain strength, he's trying to gain a little bit of strength now, and probably can recover from those sessions a little bit quicker. If you want to be doing a double loading week, where you're getting three strength sessions in there and two running sessions. This is probably the key one, and try not to replicate as best you can pre-season of what we're going to do. If you're going to do a session, just do that one session in that day. But whatever you do on that day, you make sure you give it your best effort and rip in there as hard as you can. So if you're doing a strength day on Monday, it's literally just your upper body hypertrophy session that you need to do. I'm not saying don't go away and do a little bit of a cross-training, off-feet conditioning session at all. But realistically, you've got to think of exactly what your goals are moving forward. So if you need to get bigger and you need to just put in a little bit of muscle mass on there, then you're just going to come in, rip into that hypertrophy session, have a good 45 minutes, 60, sec 60 minute session, do some mobility maybe afterwards, uh, and then you're out. 
and then you're ready again for your running session. And again, your running session is your running session. So the RP of that session out of 10 is always going to be an eight, a good 8 going on to a 9 session, depending on how far hard you want to push. But again, that is your one running session. And it's going to be the intensity base of the session that is going to maintain that aerobic base that we can build volume on as we get into the back end of the pre-season. Because obviously we'll have four days on feet and there'll be some longer running sessions. But having a good intensity base with the two sessions that you do in the week now is going to stand you in good stead for when we come back in. So if that one if that one running session is uh, your MAS 120%, so those are your 80, 85 metre runs in 15 with 15 seconds off, that's fine. There's we'll go into the running sessions, they're very they're exactly the same in fact from the ones we first give you when you we got off COVID. But you probably want to be looking towards the longer runs on those ones. Um for maybe your first session coming back in, or you can flip that completely and do the heavier running session towards the back end of the week, and you want to be doing some more of your tempo type running and your high speed running in this session. And then again, you've got two days back to back here. Or you can have a day off and then backload the week, if you will, where you could probably have the Wednesday off after you're doing your big session, come back in and do another running with the lowers. So obviously we always do our lowers after our big running session. Um, so how I've structured this one is on the Wednesday might be your big uh, lower session here. A little bit of a blast for your feet conditioning, ski erg or something like that if you want really, if you need to. Maybe a day off on uh, the Thursday or you want to do your upper session on the Thursday and then coming back in and doing your running session on the Friday. And then for me, your weekend's off then. If you want to feel like you need to do a little bit more on a Saturday morning, feel free. But ideally, you would have got all, most of your training done in this five-day five, five day cycle, two days off recovery, restart it all over again. Uh, if you're doing a triple loading week, it's where you get your three running sessions in there. So if you're somebody who we discussed in our individual play meetings that you want to increase uh, your conditioning for whatever reason, um, or you want to come back in a lot more robust, this is probably how I would set up your triple loading week. We you do your first day as a running day, second day as a strength day, uh, third day as a running day, fourth day as a strength day, fifth day as a running day. And again, I've just structured those. So this is more an extensive tempo, more of a tempo um, session here with one of the hammy health sessions that we've gone in there. The second day is probably slightly more extensive. So this one would last maybe 15 seconds, anywhere from about seven seconds, depending on the distance to 15 seconds. These sessions here, you're going to be running for about 30 to 40 seconds. These ones, you're going to be pushing out a couple of minutes. If you're going to do a five, five kilometer constant run, however long that might take 20 minutes, or you might split that into five, one K intervals. If that's, if those are the sessions that you choose to do, uh, your lower body strength day is obviously in between there and your upper body strength there. There's nothing to say like after these ones, you can't go and get a quick pump up or you do that on your extras day, maybe on a Saturday morning. Oh yeah. Like I say, you just change this uh, pump up session to one of your, your three running days and obviously have your day off. And again, what we're trying to do is just get the intensity Good, good solid session that lasts 45 minutes to an hour and done, then you're out of there. Um, these running distances are the ones, essentially what I've done is just reformatted the um, the COVID um, training sessions from back in the, uh, from back in uh, March. Um, but again, all of these still stand. Um, everybody's Bronco test was more or less the same. So I've not bothered changing these as such. These are all good, decent guidelines where you want to be running to. Um, Pancake running track times I know a few of the boys have been uh, going around there these are decent guidelines for this, the times that you want to be getting um, and then these are your 15 second distances so when I say 120% these are your 80, run, 80 meter runs there um, your box runs are going to be this will be the length and that will be the width so you'll do 15 seconds on your longer run in the, at this distance and then your 70% will be the uh, we'll be going across more of the active recovery before you go again. Um, and then set distance target speed. So if you've got a track where you know you can do a 200, a 400, 600, whatever it might be, um, you can mark out the, the track at Padgate for those ones as well. These are the, these are the times that you're going. Obviously, these are in seconds, so you just need to confirm to minutes, but um, it's not too difficult. Um, running sessions, exactly the same as what we did. Uh, again, you've got a lot of these ones that you can uh, that you can work through, set distance runs. I'm trying to stick towards this end. 
uh, fartlet running, stuff that you're going to be doing for a longer extended period um, and then cascading down, if you will, to some of these ones that last. This is a 50 second effort, that's a 40 second effort, just trying to mix up these ones. Um, these 150s, 200s, they're, they're very similar. And obviously, we've got your Bronco runs um, and then some more shuttles down this one. I'll be trying to stick to more towards this end more than anything. Um, but again, it, that, that's entirely up to you. And what I've done here is, is I've put in um, uh, 12 strength sessions here as well. So just to go through these, so we've got three upper hypertrophy sessions. And again, what I've just tried to um, get across is that we're going for tension rather than load. So in that 8 to 12 rep range and everything, and these 1.5s, uh, dumbbell bench, barbell bench, is where you basically come up halfway, come back down and then press. Never really want the f to fill um, to completely lock out the top because we're just trying to maintain tension rather than going for strength of power really at the end range. But this will uh, help maintain a good hypertrophy base and uh, standards in good stead for moving into January time. Um, you can go through there, and then I've put three strength sessions on there as well. And the theme, obviously, we've got floor press, now we've got foam roll press, and seated shoulder press. Particularly with these first two, again, we're only going to go down to the five rep range um, for a lot of our strength stuff. But what we want to be doing here is maintaining our shoulders best as we can. Um, so floor press, we're not going full, full through range of the shoulders. And again, narrow grip form roll press. You can have a go at doing those at an incline. That's a decent exercise also. Uh, and towards the back end, you've got a lot of shoulder health exercises as well. And it's exactly the same with the lowers. Uh, front squats, just trying to take the load off your back as best as we can um, from doing heavy back squats that we'll be focusing on as we usually do in pre-season. RDLs, reverse lunges, um, exercises like that. Uh, again, trying to maintain tension rather than, than really, really heavy load. You see, we've got deadlift and blocks here. So again, we're not lifting completely from the floor, just trying to restrict that range of motion. Uh, and then if you feel like you need to go and get a really big lower strength session in and again that's something potentially for the lads who we've said that could do with improving um, speed um, a lower strength session trap bar deadlift box squats and hand assisted split squats so what we've done here is try to pick exercises we've got completely concentric with the trap bar and then we've got box squats so our um, so we're not going to exit all the way through full range of motion. You've got that little pause first, so you're saving those hips and knees a little bit more. Um, if you've got, if you're coming into Pagia, yeah, obviously you can do the slide and prowler sprints with that one. I'm not sure if you've got it at your home gyms because obviously they're opening up next week. Um, but all of these exercises that you'll know, if not, just get in contact. Hammy health, you'll notice them. I've kept those on there because I think that's it. That'll be a good thing for you to crack on with. Um, just to make sure that we're boss coming into January time. So I hope that's covered everything. Tomorrow morning I'm going to send out your individual um, um, your individual targets. That'll be body fat and your bronco test. Um, essentially everybody on the bronco test will be trying to get sub five minutes when you're coming in. Uh, I know some people are way, way under that one, so you'll have a slightly longer um, time to get yours in the target that we'll be looking at. Again, the key is is to just come back in trainable state. Don't come back in like you're at the back end of the preseason already. Just come back in with a good, solid aerobic base underneath you that's had some good, solid high speed running in there, and you've done some type of strength work and a mean strength work. Don't think that you can go through this entire period just doing circuits at a lightweight. Pick up some decent heavy dumbbells, you know, and rep them out for eight to twelve reps rather than doing the 60 second Les Mills type circuits. I'm not saying that you can't do that. I'm not saying that, but that shouldn't form the, the entire foundation of your training between now and coming back in January time. Again, I'm going to be potting around over the next four or five weeks if you need anything. I've always got my mobile on me as well. If you need something or you feel like you need something that's a little bit more bespoke, get in contact with me and I'll make sure they get it out to you as quick as they can. Cheers, boys.